Hello and bonjour, I'm Sarah Bukhari and you're watching Power Dilemma here at TAC TV. HuffPost writes, Canada's housing market is getting a big helping hand from house-hungry millennials, but that will come to an end in the next several years, bringing with it an era of stagnation, the Bank of Montreal predicts. In a new affordability analysis, BMO says the country's burgeoning millennial population will rescue the housing market from its current doldrums, but only for the next few years. Millennial buyers and international migrants are cushioning the decline in detached home prices in the hottest markets, said BMO's senior economist. We expect millennials to also bolster other markets like Montreal and Ottawa as those looking for better affordability consider options beyond Toronto and Vancouver, BMO added. There is a shrinking pool of home buyers. From rising, boring costs to tough new mortgage rules, Canada's housing market is having a tough year so far. Sales dropped to a five-year low in February, while prices sank in a majority of major cities, including Toronto. What's propping up the market is the population of Canadians in prime first-time home buyers age 25 to 34, which is growing at a clip of about 2% per year, compared to overall population growth of 1.3% in the past year. That's putting upward pressure on the housing market but the first-time home buying population is expected to slow and it's likely to start shrinking by the early 2020s. The analysis also held that we will see fewer potential first-time home buyers in the market. We will see a much more sedate housing market over the next decade than we have seen over the past decade. Tim Odak is the CEO of Ontario Real Estate Association, ORIA, Canada's largest provincial real estate industry association, representing 70,000 realtors. After a distinguished public service in the Ontario legislature, including five years as leader of the Progressive Conservative Party and the leader of the official opposition, Tim Odak made the move to ORIA. Since becoming CEO of Aurea, he, uh, he and his Aurea team have focused on transforming Aurea into Ontario's most effective professional association that delivers high-impact advocacy on behalf of realtors and consumers and provide quality services to members. During his first year as CEO, Hudak was named one of the most powerful people in a residential real estate. So to talk about the housing bubble, affordability issues, and uh, a lot of other issues connected with the housing market, we have the man himself. <laughs> Welcome to my show. Um, Tim Hudak. Thanks, sir. Thanks for having me on. It's great to be back on Tag TV. Okay, that I'm feeling excited to have you. We'll see what you say at the end of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> we start from the beginning to keep the excitement on. So um, I would like to talk about real estate first, and then we will talk about the current government, progressive party. Sure. Later we're going to talk about it. So let's talk about why would you opt for Aurea? Why real estate? Why the housing market? Me in particular, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so I, um, as you were very generous in the outline about my career, I had spent 21 years in public life as mm -hmm. an MPP. I mean, that's more of a sentence than they give people these days for armed robbery, right? <laughs> and, but it was fun. Like, and, and to your viewers uh, watching uh, Power Dilemma, like it is very rewarding. There is nothing more rewarding than fighting for things that you believe in, standing up for principles, helping your community or province become better places. Tremendously rewarding. But unfortunately, I didn't win that election in 2014. So Sarah, I thought, you know, do I want to be, I stepped on as leader. And I thought to myself, do I want to be a lifer? I never did. I enjoyed the service, but it was time to move on. And I thought, what do I want to do after politics? Because I was 47 years old at the time, so hopefully close to halfway through life. You look young, though. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So you should be the politician. <laughs> and um, I really wanted to make sure I had a job where I woke up every day excited about the day ahead, that there was an important purpose, a mission to go on. And one thing that I know changed me as a man and one thing that motivated me as a politician and PC party leader was the value of owning a home, having a place that you own to raise your family and the biggest investment we make. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that the Ontario Real Estate Association was looking for a new CEO, their longtime CEO was retiring, I put my name in the hat and they picked me. 
and it's been a great almost two years since. Okay, great. So uh, the research has shown that um, there are around 700,000 millennials who are trying to leave their parents' uh, house and get their own. What are you seeing as uh, the CEO of Aurea? Are there challenges for this, these millennials? Uh, Huge. What is your take? For sure. I mean, you know, everybody watching um, Tag TV at home has got a story. It's, it could be their son or their daughter. It could be themselves could be a neighbor but you know a daughter who's done everything right she went to university and got her degree she got a good job but she's still stuck at home with mom and dad because she can't afford a place of her own and mom and dad love having her around they're excited about her future but they would like nothing better than to see her follow their path and buy a home mm -hmm. and the problem is right now that for first-time home buyers and a lot of new Canadians moving particularly into the greater Toronto and Hamilton area, there are not enough entry-level homes there in the marketplace. They're having difficulty getting into the market and millennials mm -hmm. probably having the greatest challenge right now of any previous generation because there's a lot of buyers but a small supply of homes in the market in that bracket. Mm -hmm. So um, we just have the new progressive conservative government. We're going to talk about it later. But let's go back six months ago or even a year ago. Um, in one of your uh, talks, lectures, you have talked about there, there are threats to the real estate market. So how, what are those threats you're talking about? And how has Aurea so far dealt with those Yeah, threats? no, I appreciate the question. So why don't I start out with millennials? And then mm -hmm. if you want to talk further, I can go to a general level. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I remember, Sarah, when I bought my first home, it was in 2002, my wife Debbie and I bought a home in Niagara, and I really like it there. It's quiet, it's out in the country. But the big thing that I look back now, it changed me as a man. I cared more about getting to know my neighbors. I cared more about giving back to the community. I invested in my property, much more so than when I had rented homes before that. It, it changes you. And one thing we believe, the Ontario Realtors, is that home ownership builds stronger communities. It makes for a healthier community life. So it's not only good for the economy, because when you buy a house, you put money into fixing it up, you buy new furniture, appliances, but it's good for the social fabric of our country. And our view in interacting with government is to make sure that we help create a new generation of homeowners in this province. I really worry one of the threats out there when it comes to millennials, Sarah, um, there's a whole generation stuck in mom and dad's basement. Mm -hmm. And we did a study with Ryerson University on this very topic. And we found out that if we don't start building more housing supply and making more homes available for millennials, there will be about 70,000 who will have no home to go to. Mm -hmm. So what happens as a result? One of the likely outcomes is these 70,000 young men and women, part of a generation that is the most educated generation in our country's history. I worry they'll simply pick up and leave Ontario and live in another province or move to the States. That's the big risk. Others will choose to own property farther and farther away from their jobs. Mm -hmm. And when you spend so much time stuck on the 401, mm -hmm. it lowers the quality of life and it's not good for our environment with all the fumes coming out. That's a big risk I see if we don't start creating more housing supply to help millennials get a place of their own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you you Aurea wants to create an entire a new generation of uh, home owning house owning, but there are threats. So this is what I'm trying to get at. Like, what has the previous government done that we had to end up in this situation? So the problem right now that we need to solve is we have a lot of buyers chasing fewer and fewer homes. Mm -hmm. Now some of this problem is a good problem to have. We have a lot of buyers, okay, because millennials now want to move out. They're moving up the ladder and work. Maybe they're gonna get married and have a family. That's good, right? We want to actually see that mm -hmm. succeed. Mm -hmm. And in many senses, the bank of mom and dad, their parents are helping them finance homes. We have a lot of new Canadians who are trying to move to the greater Toronto Hamilton area. That's a good thing because it means that where we live is seen across the world as one of the best places mm -hmm. to get ahead and create economic opportunity. Mortgage rates have gone up, but they are really actually quite low compared to historical averages. And our economy in the greater Toronto and Hamilton area is among the strongest in Canada. Mm -hmm. So as a result of all those things, low mortgage rates, strong economy, people moving in, a lot of people chasing homes answer your question, there's not enough housing supply. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges is that over the years, 
government policy piled on government policy that piled on government policy to make home building a lot more expensive. It took land that could be used for new homes off the map altogether. And we're actually building fewer new homes today than we did 15 years ago with a lot more people. Mm -hmm. When you have more people and fewer homes, that means prices go up mm -hmm. and a lot of people end up with no home at all. Demand and supply rule. You got it. So there it was a shortage of home supply that ended up, that resulted in the problems we're facing now. Um, okay, now let's come to the present government, uh, your position at the helm of affairs at Oria. What are, what are, your, uh, what are, the, what are the steps you're going to take? Uh, what is your plan? So we were very pleased with some of what we heard from Premier Doug Ford and then candidate Doug Ford. During one of the debates, he looked in the camera when asked a question about, you know, millennials, where people can actually get a home. He said that we need to address this issue and create more housing supply mm -hmm. to speed up the process for approving new homes, to knock down the red tape and other costs that put a home out of reach for the mm -hmm. average family. Like, honest to goodness, Sarah, in some parts of the province, it takes 10 years to approve mm -hmm. a new subdivision for a home. Mm -hmm. You can't wait that long. So we like what Premier Ford had to say about increasing housing supply and reducing red tape that makes homes more expensive. Every month of delay means a higher and higher price to the ultimate buyer. The second thing I'll add to that is taxes are way too high mm -hmm. on housing. Ah, like yep. for some reason after alcohol and tobacco, it's like houses are the most taxed item. Why we'd yep. want to tax mm -hmm. that so high? There are some municipal politicians who want to bring in the new tax. Toronto has what they call municipal land transfer tax. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a home, you, you get dinged mm -hmm. twice in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Provincial land transfer tax, city transfer tax, and that can be a real sting in the pocketbook yeah. or people won't buy homes. Big issue for the Toronto Real Estate Board. We we're very happy that Premier Ford and the PC party said they don't want to see that spread out to other cities. That cities have enough taxing authority, let's help them run their efficiencies mm -hmm. better, more efficient operations, stop driving up their costs, but we don't want to see an additional tax put on housing. Exactly. In fact, we'd like to see it come down. Mm -hmm. So is, the, is there any chance they're going to be reduced taxes in entire Ontario and in the city of Toronto? So you asked me what the Ontario Real Estate Association is, and, and you know, I'll explain that, folks, for the viewers. Um, we represent about 72,000 realtors across the province of Ontario, realtors are people who are out there every day trying to help people find a place mm -hmm. to call home mm -hmm. or to sell their home downsize and put that money away from retirement. So they're out there working hard every day, but we want to make sure we're helping people when it comes to provincial policy as well. So we've been pushing the previous government. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, Sarah, smart politics is you work with the opposition parties too, because eventually one of them is going to become the government mm -hmm. and we want to have good policies there. So we put a number of ideas on the table for more housing supply mm -hmm. to help keep affordability for homes mm -hmm. for buyers. Mm -hmm. On the taxes, we have asked for an increase in what is called the uh, rebate for first-time home buyers. Now, under the previous government, the Liberals, they did double that rebate. So a first-time home buyer gets $4,000 knocked off their taxes. Mm -hmm. It's a big help. It means in some parts of the province, they don't pay a land transfer tax at all. Yeah. In the GTA, it's not enough. Helps, not enough. So we'd like to see them make an even greater rebate for first-time home buyers or eliminate that land transfer tax bite altogether for first-time buyers. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What is the role of developers in um, jacking up the prices? I am... Um, or not? Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm not of the conspiracy view mm -hmm. that all the developers sit around a table mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and try to fix the game. I don't believe that because developers are highly competitive. Mm -hmm. And certainly if you open up a, a, a new subdivision or a, a new street, you get all kinds of buyers. I think the problem that we have is we've made it too hard to develop new homes. We've made them far more expensive. A lot of process to go through with overlapping government agencies. The way to actually make sure that developers bring housing supply to the market mm -hmm. is to knock down all that red tape and delay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've talked about um, taxes, we've talked about developers. One more thing about the international investors yeah. and the taxes on them. Uh, there has been a huge, uh, like a hue and cry on foreign investors are buying and they're not paying 
the tax is equivalent to what Ontarians are paying. What, what is the sense you make out of it? Well, you know, in the, um, in the latest data, I'm trying to remember what it was exactly, but I think mm -hmm. it was about the government now tracks that. The government did not used to track it. Now they're tracking it. That's good how many are foreign buyers. But it was, you know, 2.5%, I think. So it's not a big part of the market. The Toronto Real Estate Board did their own study about a year ago when the market was very hot and there was speculation that it was foreign buyers that were driving up prices and they found out that it was around four, four and a half percent of the market. So it's not that big. I suspect a lot of people um, spread stories that this was the case or maybe they saw somebody who um, didn't look like the neighborhood but they're a Canadian citizen or a Canadian resident that was simply buying into a neighborhood uh, that there wasn't ethnically diverse. And then somebody says, oh, they're foreign buyers mm -hmm. that are coming into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Look, hmm. owning a home has always been part of our culture. When new Canadians come to live here permanently, they want to invest in a home. That was the story of my grandparents, the story of a lot of people who are watching right now today. We want to encourage home ownership, not make it more difficult. Mm -hmm. It's where you raise the family and it gives you a stake in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but is it allowed, like it is of course allowed that a foreign investor can buy in Ontario and uh, can live in another country, right? That's right. And uh, going forward, would there be more taxes uh, levied on these uh, investors? I don't see that. So the, the previous government did bring in a foreign buyer's tax. So it's mm -hmm. an additional tax if you were not a resident of our country mm -hmm. or a citizen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see any government plans to make that tax even even higher. You know, my view of what the priorities will likely be for Premier Ford, his cabinet and caucus is, is how do we make sure that there's enough housing supply out there, there's enough movement in the marketplace that people have a fair shot at buying a home they can afford. Mm -hmm. I see them focusing on supply and helping get taxes down, not increasing them. Okay, um, let's go back to the previous government. Uh, there was um, a mandatory um, energy audit scheme. Just explain our viewers, what was that? Is it still there? Because it was kind of a hurdle for new buyers or second home buyers or third home buyers uh, to buy homes. Sure, that's a great question. I, I bet most folks mm -hmm. haven't heard about this because mm -hmm. it, it was an idea the government had, a promise but it was never implemented and I hope it's not. So it was mm -hmm. called HERD, H-E-R-N-D. Um, mm -hmm. Let me tell you what that was. It basically said, Sarah, that if you wanted to list your home for sale, you had to have a mandatory energy audit. Mm -hmm. So I suspect it was well-intentioned because they like to give consumers information and probably good for the environment to know if homes are environmentally friendly or not and try to make them more so. But here's the problem with that H-E-R-N-D program. So let's picture, um, uh, a widow. So her husband's recently passed away. Mm -hmm. She's selling the house and that's going to be her retirement nest egg for the rest of her mm -hmm. life. If she was forced to have a mandatory energy audit, energy auditors aren't regulated the way realtors are or doctors or accountants. There's no standards, there's no um, regulator to impose penalties if they cheat. So you could have a situation where that nice old lady mm -hmm. is told by a shady operator you have to have $20,000 in repairs. And guess what? My cousin happens mm -hmm. to be working mm -hmm. in the place next door. So there's no consumer protection. We were worried people would be ripped off and lose mm -hmm. their money. Mm -hmm. Secondly, picture a scenario where she wants to sell her house and some you know, rich buyer comes in and says, all right, Mrs. Johnson, I'm going to lower the price of your home by $20,000. She gets less money. He pockets the difference and makes no repairs to the home whatsoever. That's not good for the environment and it doesn't help out the homeowner. So that was the problem. It's a bit of background on the program. We did get the previous Liberal government to put the brakes on the program. We were thankful for that. Mm -hmm. And we do hope that the PC government will not implement this because it's not good for consumers and it's not good for people trying to sell their home. Mm -hmm. There are better ways. What are some other hurdles in the previous government which you want or Oria wants or just home buyers want to be taken off so that it's easier affordability of houses. Yeah, we're walking through the issues really well here and I appreciate that. So the top thing for Ontario Realtors we want to see the Ford government focus on is making sure that we have that next generation of homeowners. So that mm -hmm. means number one, making sure there's enough homes in the market, mm -hmm. especially starter homes. Number two, let's try to get the taxes down, not mm -hmm. up. 
And we recognize that the Ford government already has made a lot of commitments when it comes to things like reducing gas taxes. That's mm -hmm. great. Lowering income taxes, mm -hmm. especially for low and middle income. Fabulous small business. They've got a lot of tax commitments. If we can squeeze in a bit more to lower the land transfer tax mm -hmm. for first time home buyers, mm -hmm. that will be a big help wow. to be able to try to get in the marketplace. So that's, you know, at the top of our list, uh, those two. We also want to make sure that we have the highest level of professionalism and education for realtors. Mm -hmm. A lot of the rules around realtors were set back in 2002. Mm -hmm. I know because I actually happened to be the minister at the time. Mm -hmm. And in 2002, the rules in education were leading North America. But sir, that was 16 years ago. Years ago. You won't remember this. You're too young. <laughs> Most real estate deals were closed by fax machines. Mm -hmm. Now you can do it electronically. There was no iPhones mm -hmm. invented. There was no social media. So we need to raise the standards for the modern market. What realtors do is so critically important to our, our lives. It's the biggest purchase that we'll make in our entire life. It's a place mm -hmm. of great emotion and the fondest mm -hmm. memories. You depend on your realtor to give you great advice and know what's going to happen down the road and get you a good deal and negotiate for you. We want to make sure that we raise the educational standards and professional standards to meet the needs of the 21st century. We want to be the leaders in North America again and I do hope that the new minister, Todd Smith, and Premier Ford and the new government will go with us hand in hand on that. I think they will. Mm -hmm. They did vote for it when it was under the Liberals, and I hope we continue down that path. Okay, great. Now, yeah, you've elaborated uh, very nicely so. uh, how affordability could be created, uh, both by steps by the government and by, you know, by people. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, you in the past being the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario. On 7th of June, around 9.30, when it was announced that uh, Progressive Conservative Party has, is in the majority, what were you, what, how, how were you feeling? I was doing radio, actually. I, um, I was hosting a show on, uh, on News Talk 1010. 10, 10. Yeah. On I, election I the it too. Do you listen to it? All right, good, good. How do I sound? Very good. All right. They say I've got a face for radio, right? That <laughs> yeah. old line. Um, you, you know, look, I, I've, I've got a job now as the CEO of the Ontario Real Estate Association mm -hmm. to work with all members of the legislature mm -hmm. and all the bureaucrats and our regulator um, without showing any kind of political favor. I, I respect the work they mm -hmm. do, and while different parties will have different views, quite frankly, all of them had some good ideas, all three parties about how they can make sure that we can create that new generation of homeowners in our province. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody has some kids and they want to upgrade because they need more space, a bigger, bigger family, that they'll be able to afford that. So I work with all the parties um, in that sense. Obviously, I've, I've always been a PC party uh, member, and a lot of those that are now in cabinet, um, I served with. So friends, colleagues, or members who were elected under me, so on a personal level, Sarah, it's really exciting to see them succeed. Mm -hmm. I had hoped that I was the one that, you know, took mm -hmm. them there and mm -hmm. put them in cabinet. And it was seeing them at the swearing-in ceremony on a personal level really warmed my heart and got me excited mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. There's also new energy and new ideas, and that is always a good thing in government. Okay. So in your opinion, what are a few major things uh, the new government should look at? I, I really think that uh, that Doug Ford nailed it when he said he wants to make life more affordable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I heard that in my work now with the Real Estate Association around home ownership, um, and I would hear that just in conversations whether I was in Toronto or, or home in, in Niagara, and you saw how people responded to that. So when he talked about getting taxes down, getting rid of the carbon tax, you know, I think he really resonated with Ontarians, and now representing the realtors in the province of Ontario. It resonated with us, too, because every day, you know, my realtor members are going to be helping that, that young couple. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's expecting, they've got a vision in their head where the crib's going to go, mm -hmm. put a play set in the backyard, and then at the end of the day, they, they can't get the house. And our members want to, there's nothing that makes a realtor happier than when they can hand over the keys to somebody getting the first home. Mm -hmm. We all remember that. Our realtors remember that, so we're very happy that there's a focus on that from the government. Okay, wonderful. Uh, we are going to, thank you so much. My pleasure. We are going to take a short break, viewers, and once we come back, there will be more. Stay tuned.
उरूज फाइनेंशियल के जाहिद से लाए आपके फैमिली और फ्रेंड्स के लिए ट्रैवल एंड विजिटर्स इंश्योरेंस जो दे आपको बेस्ट प्लान एट बेस्ट प्राइस महाना पेमेंट प्लान फॉर सुपर वीजा इंश्योरेंस और क्लेम में मदद आपके बेहतर मुस्तबिल की जमानत उरूज फाइनेंशियल उरूज फाइनेंशियल के जाहिद सैयद लाए आपके मॉर्गेज डेट के लिए लाइफ इंश्योरेंस एंड इन केस ऑफ डिसबिलिटी मंथली पेमेंट प्लान जो आपकी फैमिली को दे बेनिफिट ना के आपके बैंक को आपके बेहतर मुस्तबिल की जमानत उरूज फाइनेंशियल Welcome back to Power Dilemma here at Tag TV. Uh, viewers, we are talking to the CEO of Oria, Mr. Tim Hudak, and we are going to continue to talk to him. So, Tim, welcome back. Good to be back. Okay. So, are uh, you from originally from the Niagara region? I um, am. What are your plans to uh, give it more development because we have the beautiful Niagara Falls. I just over the weekend I was there. Um, what are your plans to develop it? For it is it is a, a beautiful place. I'm glad they enjoyed it in the falls. We get spoiled. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. born and raised mm -hmm. there, so sometimes we take this for granted. Yeah. And it is an awesome place and I I did keep my home uh in uh, in West Niagara and uh, I think I'll always be in Niagara even if I'm working and have a place in Toronto now. So on the, on the development side, so we um I mentioned Aria represents 70,000, 72,000 uh realtors in our province and we're made up of 38 member boards. So in every district in the province we have a local real estate board and we got a really strong one there in in Niagara. the Niagara Association of Realtors. So I work with them and and what do I hear from them and fits my own view as a resident? A lot of people are looking to Niagara now as they retire or semi-retire out of the greater Toronto mm -hmm. area particularly. And property there obviously less expensive than mm -hmm. it is in the core of the province. So largely they've been happy with the market. But what they like to see though, same thing, more housing supply. Mm -hmm. Like they're saying for for Niagarans who have grown up there or have moved there, it's pretty hard to get in the housing market for the first time. So retirees um and they say particularly starter homes they want to see and also improve transportation so what could help out in Niagara a lot our local board and I would agree on this seeing you know go transit extended to Niagara as soon as possible that opens up a world of opportunities it makes life easier mm -hmm. instead of being stuck on the Queen Elizabeth way you know mm -hmm. or half your life yeah <laughs> and a uh, more highway development. There was a plan at one time to open up a new highway through Niagara, which would have been a real lifeline for jobs and investment and more people moving in. Mm -hmm. So those two projects I think would make a really big difference in quality of life mm -hmm. and open up more opportunities for people to actually get a home of their own in the beautiful part of the province. Mhm. Mm so talking about projects, uh outside housing, what are your recommendations for the present government? Uh connected to you know various projects for the for development of Ontario. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a great question and one thing we're doing as Ontario Realtors um is we don't always have to just talk about housing issues. What are other ways that we can actually talk about, you know, building a stronger community? Mm -hmm. And our realtor members are engaged in communities right across province whether it's in in Brampton or Ottawa, you know, or or North Bay. A local example, the Toronto Real Estate Board has been very strong on improving transportation and that will resonate you know right across our province. So what we'd like to see uh, another priority beyond housing for the Ford government improving our capacity when it comes to highways and roads, making sure we invest in our transportation infrastructure like go or the subways in Toronto. People are just spending so much time stuck in their cars. Mm -hmm. It um it also will mean that with transportation links people have more choices as where they're going to live if they can get to work in smooth fashion. The Ford uh, campaign plan did have some significant investments in transportation and one that I liked cuz it was part of my plan back in the mm -hmm. day is actually, you know, seeing how you can upload some of the costs or the coordination when it comes to rail transit between mm -hmm. go and the TTC. I I think the other thing I put on the list transportation investments. Okay so Tim we talked about a lot of things the yeah, home supply and past government and present government and your role in you know in Oria and the Progressive Conservative Party let's talk about your family Sure So you know you have uh, two two girls I get to see them a lot more often now mm -hmm. I mean I'm busy but mm -hmm. not as busy as they used to be Yeah so my daughter's Miller and Maitland and Miller will be going into she's a big grade 6 starting in September. Oh, wow. Time flies. Mm -hmm. So for the folks who might remember from politics maybe saw me carry Miller around when she was an infant or quite small so she is now 
heading to grade six. She tells me she's a tween. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a blast. I'm, I'm super excited. Um, although Miller said she liked it better when I was in politics. I said, why? I said, because I got to go on TV more often. <laughs> and You're then, gonna hear, come again now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, I should have brought her in yeah. the studio. <laughs> and Maitland, mm -hmm. um, who was born just before the campaign in 2014, mm -hmm. is now four, she says four and a half, not quite four and a half. Mm -hmm. And she will be starting junior kindergarten mm -hmm. in Big the fall. Girl. She's the, d the little devil in the family. She's the troublemaker. <laughs> Miller follows the rules. Maitland breaks rules. I think second that's probably child. true for many families. I think it's true. <laughs> I was the oldest kid. I followed the rules. I was my mom and dad. Child. <laughs> You're trouble. Uh, and my wife Deb's doing mm -hmm. great. So, so mm -hmm. Debbie actually had worked in in mm -hmm. politics and had a career uh, in the corporate sector, mm -hmm. and then set her career aside to help um, raise my daughter uh, Miller, who had a bit of a rough start in life. And Deb runs her uh, her own uh, business from home and communications, and she's also on. News Talk 1010 and sometimes mm -hmm. on Global TV. So mm -hmm. you can see her doing commentary. She's the smart one in the family. <laughs> Perfect. Any message you want to give to uh, realtors and home buyers? I, I feel optimistic. I, number one, real estate is a solid investment. This is a great place to live, the envy of many parts of the world. And I just believe that while there can be ups and downs in the market in the short term, in the long run, it is a solid investment. And with the demands that we have on housing, I'd be very optimistic about where things are going in the intermediate and longer term. Mm -hmm. I had a different view than your earlier comments in the Bank of Montreal. I'm very optimistic about things around housing. And second, you know, there's a lot of good ideas to help make sure that that millennial who followed the rules and did everything right, still stuck in mom and dad's basement. The good news is there's answers on the table. They're right there. It just will take the courage of government to implement them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that Doug Ford has talked about give me a lot of cause for optimism. Okay. It was so wonderful to talk to you, Tim, today my at pleasure. my show, Power Dilemma, here at TAC TV. And uh, viewers, with this, uh, we are going to see you again. We talked a lot about uh, the housing market, what are the hurdles uh, given by the previous government, and how the present government could erase those hurdles to create more affordability for first home buyers or even the second or third home buyers. Uh, so stay tuned. Keep watching Power Dilemma with Sarah Bukhari.